She says, I saw a man of striking appearance, radiant face, beautifully created. His belly wasn't protruding, it wasn't defecting him, he didn't have a gut, nor was his head disproportionate and small, finely made, a specimen of a creation. In his eyes there was a contrast, the dark was immensely dark, the white was excessively white, and his eyelashes were long, and his neck was elegantly long. His beard was full and thick, his eyebrows were arced, but they were not joint, it was separated. He was medium in height, your eye didn't have to strain to look up at him, nor was it tedious to look down at him, he was a comfortable sight to look at. A branch amidst two branches, refreshing is just his glance. This is Muhammad Rasulullah. And if Allah give me a chance to see him, I will go and pledge allegiance to him. From afar, the most striking and outstanding in appearance. And when he came near, the best of them and the most handsome of them in closeness. When he was silent, dignity covered him. And when he spoke, it was audible and clear almost commanding and overtaking he was accurate to the point not excessive his words were like beads jewels coming out of a necklace calculated worked on prepared polished one after the other it would flow magically the people that were with him they were working around him to try to serve and protect him when he used to say something they used to hearken to what he used to say when he commanded they used to compete to fulfill the command the husband says Wallahi, this is the one the Quraysh are seeking. This is Muhammad Rasulullah. And if Allah give me a chance to see him, I will go and pledge allegiance to him. And from amidst the children of Adam, Allah Rabbul Izzah exalted, honored, preferred and chose the Anbiya. And in that regard, he Azza wa Jal sent 124,000 messengers and prophets to teach, lead and guide mankind. And from the galaxy of Anbiya, these best sons of Adam, Allah Rabbul Izzah chose the Rusul, the messengers whom were given a specific revelation or a new Sharia. And from amidst this chosen category of the Rusul, he Azza wa Jal selected five as the Ul al Azmi min al Rusul, as the greats amidst the messengers. And they are chronologically from the time of Nuh, Nuh alayhi salam, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad alayhim afdalu salatu wa atamu taslim. And then from the select group of five, the like of which humankind have never seen nor will ever see again. Imagine amidst them is a person who spoke to Allah direct. Amidst them is Isa alayhi salam who would get a piece of clay, make it into a bird and breathe in it and it would fly off. He would call the dead rise and the dead would rise by the permission of Allah Rabbul Izzah. These are the best sons of Adam, the princes, and the greatest and the grandest amidst the messengers. Yet when he Azza wa Jal from amidst the select five chose friends, he Azza wa Jal chose Khalilain Ithnain, two friends, Ibrahim wa Muhammad. And then he Azza wa Jal from these two friends elevated, honored, chose and preferred our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the seal of prophethood. Allah Rabbul Izzah 
completed the age-old religion of Islam through him. Anas ibn Malik says, I came out one night, uh, in, I came out one night, it was the full moon night. And I looked at the moon and in the desert understand the moon is, is an awesome sight. It is smooth, it is radiant, it is clear, it is gentle compared to the scorching sun at which they are used to. So the moon was the epitome of beauty. So he says, I came out at a full moon night and I looked at the, at the moon and I saw it, beautiful, handsome. So I said, let me go see if the moon is more handsome or my prophet is more handsome. Let me see if that is more beautiful or the prophet is more beautiful. So I went and I saw him standing afar. So I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and he said, Wallahi, he was more handsome than the moon in its entirety. That, that is just the look of your Rasul. And I get tired of the nonsense. Don't describe the Prophet. Concentrate on his message. You don't describe him. I will. The Prophet wasallam was mind-bogglingly handsome. But his handsomeness was covered with waqar in Jalal in Hayba. The Sahaba say, when we used to sit at, at his feet, the Ahl al-Ilm say, two feelings conflicting would come on the heart. The first one, you wanted to look at him. You wanted to behold the majesty of his face. And when you wanted to look up, shyness used to overtake you, so you used to look down. Amr ibn al-As says, I sat with him many times, but if you ask me to describe his face, I can't describe it. I couldn't look up at him. And that is why he didn't have the problems that Yusuf alayhi salam had. Because it was difficult to penetrate the awe and the splendor of the Rasul. Whilst he was that, you know, handsome, handsome man, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was not flirty. He was not the toying type. He wasn't easy. Muslims... Learn from your prophet. Be grand. Have an awe and an aura around you. Your prophet, alayhi afdal salatu wa atamu taslim, was a great man. No, he was the greatest of men. A man with a huge vision. Listen to the story. This is in the early years of Islam. He was in sajda, in the haram. They came and took the intestines of a camel and placed it on top of the blessed back of the Rasul. Imagine the feeling of embarrassment. Imagine the feeling of having filth on top of you. Dirt was poured on his blessed back. And he is in sajda and he didn't lift his, himself up from the sajda. He stayed. Someone went and told Fatima al Zahra, they have just poured dirt on the back of your father. She came crying, young girl at that stage, and she's cleaning the dirt and cursing them. And the Prophet wasallam says, Don't worry, ya Fatima. Don't worry, my little daughter. What your father has brought will go to every house on the planet. The battle of Ahzab came. 10,000 plus have come at the doors of Medina. The Muslims at this stage, fully grown adult fighting men, 1,400. If you took the youth and the youngsters, 3,000. 1,400 or 3,000 against 10,000 plus was suicide. And the Quran describes it. Remember when your eyes grew wide in panic and the heart started to thump at the throat. Remember the days of fear. At that instance where everyone is afraid and the hypocrites come, our houses are unprotected. Give us permission to leave the battlefield. At that instance, the Prophet wasallam, that big rock comes in the middle of the trench. So the Rasul comes, yeah, they call him, Ya Rasulullah, help us out. The Prophet struck the rock and a shudder, a spark went 
through the entire city of Medina. So he said, Allahu Akbar, the palaces of Rome, they are standing over the trench, 10,000 plus, and you are talking about the palaces of Persia and the cities of Rome and the cities of Yemen. Do you see your Rasul at the most difficult hours was pulled up and pulled the nation up through this awesome vision. What do you live for? Do you have a vision? Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu wa ardah in the days of Jahiliya, Amr ibn al-As came to him. Ya Umar, what is your dream in life? What do you want to achieve? He said, I want to have a herd of camels that I can tend to, that I can milk, that I can, you know, take offsprings from and live nice and comfortable. It was a very localized, small dream, a lot like our dreams today. Then Umar came in contact with the Rasul. And Umar became a Muslim. And Umar became Farooq al, Farooq al Ummah. And Umar became Amir al Mu'mineen. Ah, and Amr ibn al As came to him, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. I asked you in the Jahiliyyah, what was your aim? What was your mission? What was your vision? What do you aspire towards? And you told me you wanted some camels. I'm asking you today, what do you want, Ya Umar? So he says, I want to strive that the deen of Muhammad reach every corner of the globe. Do you see, it is that vision that made them work night and day. And the day of Hunayn came. And Hunayn was a difficult day. The Muslims are coming from Mecca. The tribe of Ghatafan, the Bedouin tribe, has amassed a huge army. And they are so determined that they even brought their women and children with them. That one sweeping attack and let's finish them. And the Prophet ﷺ is riding into the valley. And Hunayn is camped up on the hills, on the mountain. And just as the sun is coming from behind the mountain, and the Prophet and the Ashab have reached the slow point, the tribe of Ghatafan unleashed. And the warriors came down. And such an overwhelming attack. The Muslims who were at the front, lost heart and they started to turn back and they started to flee backward in that confusion a stampede happened and they're pushing the muslims back like that and what does the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do the ashab say he stood on his stirrups and he said ana nabiyullahi la kadhib أنا ابن عبد المطلب أنا نبي الله لا كذب أنا ابن عبد المطلب I am the prophet of Allah it isn't a lie I am the grandchild of Abdul Muttalib Ya Abbas call out to the people of the surah of Baqarah Ya Abbas call out to those that pledged under the tree of Hudaybiyah and then from this defeat through the courage and bravery of the Rasul, Allah Rabbul Izzat turned a lost campaign into a victory. The Rasul was brave. There was a big bang in Medina. A rock or a meteorite had hit from the sky. And it was in the middle of the night. And the Ashab say in that fear we woke up and everyone's looking around. And then we saw him. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayh on a horse bareback just jumps on it and he goes I checked it out it's okay it's okay I've checked it out it's okay the Rasul was brave but whilst he was brave he wasn't arrogant bravery means to overcome your fears the Rasul was humble he conquered Mecca but how did he ride into the city? The Ashab say he lowered himself and humbled himself so much that his beard was hitting the back of his camel to show that I haven't come in arrogance, Ya Rabb. Learn humility from your Rasul. Learn modesty from your Rasul. The Rasul was good to his family. 
The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of you are those who are best to his wives and his family, and I am the best of you. He was the Rasul of Allah. And look at his relationship with his wives and with his family. He used to play with them, entertain them, laugh with them, joke with them, eat with them. He did it when he came into the house, it wasn't like a dark cloud came into the house. Aisha radiallahu anha says, I have a son and the skies have a son. You know when the sun comes out at this happy moment, you say you're like the ray of sunshine. The Rasul was sunshine to his household. What will your wife say about you? Aisha radiallahu anha says, When I was younger and more agile and more fit, the Prophet raced me or chased me and I ran and overtook him. I beat him. So years passed. Radiallahu an Aisha. Years passed. Aisha radiallahu anha put on weight. She became bigger. The Prophet is in a, is in a campaign. He's traveling with the Ashab. And then in the middle of the desert, he tells the army, go ahead. Me and my wife will stay back a little. So when they're gone and out of sight, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looks at her and says, You want to race? Ah, uh, salawat wa rabbi wa salamuhu alayka ya Rasulullah. So can you imagine our mother Aisha getting ready to race? So they stood and they ran. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam beat her. So he said, This one for that one. Aisha radiallahu anha says, I used to watch him from the corner of my eyes when we used to eat. So I used to take a piece of meat or a morsel of meat and bite it and put it back in the plate. He used to pick up that morsel, turn it to where my mouth had touched it and bite from the same place and look at me and I would blush. Your prophet was good to his family. Be good to your families. The Prophet wasallam spoiled them. A group of Abyssinians doing sword play in the courtyard of the masjid. She wanted to watch Aisha. So she said, can I watch? So the Prophet stood in front of her to let her watch from over his shoulder so that she's covered behind him. And she watched and she's enjoying it and she's young and the Rasul is older. Life is much more serious from where he stands. So he stood and stood and stood. And then he said, Is it enough, Ya Aisha? And she says, I wanted to see how much he loves me. So I said, No, stay. She said, I watched him change legs. And she says, I asked him, What is your love for me like? So he said, Like a knot. Tight. She used to ask, you know, as the days used to go by, how is the knot? So he used to say, ala haliha, as it was. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam never lied. He never deceived. He never even remotely deceived. Even with your eyes, don't wink deception. The Rasul was gracious. There was... One of the arch enemies of Islam, Thumama ibn Asil, he was one of the chiefs of one of the tribes, and he had caused Islam a lot of harm. So, as it happened, he fell in the hands of the Muslim army, and they brought him to Medina tied up. There was no prisons in Medina. So they didn't know what to do with him, so they tied him in one of the pillars of the masjid. So he's tied. And the house of the Prophet opens into the masjid. So he came in and look at the adab of the Rasul. He looks at him and says, 
How are things with you, O Sulaiman? So this proud and perhaps at this stage arrogant man says, it is all good. And then thinking the Prophet might do something, he gives a warning. Ya Muhammad, if you take my life, understand my blood is expensive. My tribe will come to avenge. Don't think this will be washed off like that. And if you decide to be gracious, to be bountiful, you will be bountiful to a person who knows how to be grateful. And if you want wealth, ask it will be granted. So the Prophet turned and went to pray. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed. Next day he came again. He saw Sumama again. And he asks again, how are things? So he says, all good. The man answers the exact same way. So the Prophet turned and went to pray. Third day he came again. How are things? The man answers the exact same way. So the Prophet smiled. He said, release him. I don't want your blood. I don't want you indebted to me. And I don't want your wealth. Go, you're free. So Sumama left the masjid. And he went and into the nearest orchard. He saw water. He said, can I wash myself? They said, go for it. He poured it on himself and washed himself. And came wet and dripping into the masjid. And he said, Ya Muhammad. Your land was the most hated land to me. Allah has made it the most beloved land to me. Your religion was the most hated religion to me. Allah has made it the most beloved of religions to me. You were the most hated person to me. Allah has made you the most beloved person to me. Ashhadu annaka la Rasulullah. I swear you're the messenger of Allah. He won the world with his kindness. He won the world with his love. He won the world with a heart like an ocean. He didn't win the world by the stupidity that you see around you today. They say he used to give without fear of poverty. Once there was a valley full of livestock. He was standing over it watching all the you know, wealth that has fallen to Muslims. With him was a new river to a person on the brink of Islam. So the Prophet said, do you like what you see? He said, yes. He goes, go, it is all yours. So the man said, he goes, I have seen king's gift. And I have seen prince's gift. And I have seen chief's gift. This is the gift of none but the Prophet. Only Prophets have hearts like this.